your victory is guaranteed. Now, because some of us live a lifestyle of trusting God, we are not surprised when we get the victory. We are never caught off guard when God blesses us, promotes us, sends us better, does for us the good measure, the press, the shaking. I want to know what faith is. So when I tell somebody I'm a faith walk, what that mean? Woo, I'm glad you asked. How much time you got? I got about 10 minutes. Well, I'm going to do this in 10 minutes. But it'll get so good to where at 10, they'll tell you, keep going. Keep telling me about faith. Come on. Because the thing with people is that no matter what they look like on the outside, everybody's dealing with problems. See, see, don't you back off of your faith because of what something looks like in the external realm of the person you communicated with. You don't know what's happening at the house. You don't know what's happening in their body, and they need to hear about faith. <laughs> Folk will live by what they call innate knowledge, which is basically knowledge that we as humans are born with. And so people believe that you have been given innate knowledge. If you develop it right, then you're able to do in life anything that you want to do. And these ways, listen to me, for most people, they eliminate God. They don't, they don't include God. You have been given innate knowledge. Develop that knowledge. Come on. And then you will be successful. And so some people, when they talk to you about being successful, they talk to you about their human instinct, their innate knowledge. Come on. The common sense that they use on a day-to-day -day basis, and they have no problem letting you know, this is why I'm successful. I had a hunch about doing something. I followed that, that gut feeling, that, that hunch. That instinct, that intuition, and it changed my life for the better. Now listen to me, that's okay for a sinner. But that should never be the testimony for a Christian. Your testimony should always involve your faith. Your trust. Watch this, in an unseen God. That's always changing your life for the better. You haven't touched him. You haven't seen him with your naked eyes. But he is more real than the person that you set him beside. Because they're limited. They're here today, gone tomorrow. But God is always here. Oh, did I teach it right? Did I drop that right? God is always here. Why trust more in a person who's here today and could be, could be gone tomorrow versus God who is eternal? This is the reason when God tells you to do a thing, you do it because he is eternal. He's not going anywhere. Woo! Anybody ever made your promise then changed? I got your back. Whenever you look, they no longer there. They changed on you. Y'all better hear me today. God will never, God will never change, make it personal on me. I said make it personal. Tell yourself, God will never change on me. What did he say? For I will never leave you. I will be with you always, even until... That's that superior way of living. It's knowing no matter what I go through, God is always present. That's when the psalmist said, called him a very present help. In time of what? Trouble. When you get in trouble, don't ask what God is. God is present. Somebody need this. So when I walk by faith, that's a superior way of walking. 
Listen to me. It is so superior. It is so high in rank, in order, in statue, that most folk can't even comprehend it. I'm okay with that. You know, there are things that get so high in rank that depending on where a person is at in life, they might not even understand that something can go that high. Come on. I just said something then. It depends on who you're talking to. And so don't expect everybody to understand your superior way of walking. Just know when you're doing it that it's the better way. It's the better way. I want to prove it through a set of multiple scriptures. Okay? Showing you people who chose the superior way. But we'll also look in scripture at people who chose that which is inferior. And listen to me before we start this. Understand, if you choose the inferior way of walking, it leads to huge disappointment. It leads to huge disappointment. Many of us have did it. Have you ever been guilty? Have you ever did something because of sight? And the way that you thought it was going to work out, your beautiful plan, the beautiful picture you painted, in the end, that wasn't what you saw happening. I didn't paint that. Yes, you did. You thought that was going to be the end right there. You didn't even end up nowhere near there. You ended up way over here. You see, because you chose that inferior way of walking or living. Listen to me. I'm saying when it comes to a Christian, young or old, married or single, this is the superior way of walking. We don't look at our young people and then we teach them another way. No, we give them the superior way. You are young, but this is a better way of walking. Everybody at your school ain't going to walk this way. Everybody at your college ain't going to walk this way. Can I teach it right? Everybody on your team ain't going to walk this way. But we got to teach our young people the superior way of walking. Why? Why? Why should we teach it to them? Because most of us that are walking in that superior a better way, we wish we'd have got it sooner. Some of us, when we look back, we wish we'd have grew up in a faith home. Come on. Getting it in somebody earlier, there's a superior way. You ought to see my grandkids when they fall or get hurt. When they bump their leg real bad. They run to me and they say, Paul, Paul, pray. Pray. One of them brought me to all. Pray. None of them with all. Are you teaching your children that? Married folk, when you're walking according to this superior way, how you go have an ordinary marriage? Come on. See, it causes you to think, what are you really walking by? How can two Christians be joined together and not produce a productive marriage? Arguing all the time about nothing. That's that inferior way. Trying to solve every problem with your senses. Not allowing God to play a part. Then look at our singles. Are y'all walking according to this superior way? Are you happy being single until God brings Boaz, until he brings Ruth? Or are you in the church miserable and frustrated? Wanting to be like ungodly folk. See, the superior way. How's your finances? How's your finances? If you've been in the church for years, how's your finances doing? When it comes to how you handle money, are you, are you in this superior way of walking? Or are you choosing that which is lower in rank? Because God don't have favors. 
He didn't base prosperity on jobs. He didn't base prosperity on doing well or having good success on what a person makes per hour. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Prove it, Pastor. Go back to Abraham. He blessed Abraham, and Abraham didn't have a job. He, Abraham was going from one place to the other place. Just obeying God. But everywhere he went, God blessed him. Do you know God will do the same for you? You know he'll do the same for me? God will say to me, you just stay in my will and I'm going to take care of you. 